All right, everyone. So welcome to the lightning talks. This is the moment. So you have four minutes, each of you subscribed. Uh, of course, you can you can jump in. We have, I think, uh, one or two slots that are free. I'm not sure I see the two last. Uh, oh, Diego, you're here. That's perfect. Um, and uh, and uh, you have four minutes, slides, no slides. You choose sharing your screen was discouraged. But uh, if you didn't share your slide, you should have to share your screen now. Uh, and uh, and for you, Damien, I have your slides. So we'll start that up. So Damien uh, is, uh, is French. Bonjour, Damien. Comment ça va? <laughs> Good. It's part of Federation, so I think it's by name by um, you know Star Trek, and they are doing uh, open source space in a way, right? So you're going to talk about the Phoenix project, and I uh, give you the screen. Take it away. You have four minutes. Go ahead. I'm just trying. Oh Can right, right. Oh, let me just give you the the permission rights. I mean, I just have like find you in the list. Oh, here. Perfect. Oh, you're. Thank you, Arthur. Just testing. Okay, it works. Uh, okay, let's go. So, hello, everyone. So, I'm a member of the Federation Initiative. I'm going to talk about the Phoenix project, which is launched in the frame of the Federation Initiative. Just to explain uh, what Federation is, Federation is a, it was launched by the CNES, the French Space Agency. It's carried by an association of volunteers and the mission is to enable individuals to design and manufacture open source hardware with no requirement of skills, experience, diploma, or network, only in energy and passion. So, how are we doing that? Uh, well, switch here. Uh, so, we're doing that through four main pillars. We have a, char a federation charter, which is our legal base. Uh, we have a collaborative web platform, so it enables uh, project management, collaboration, publishing the results of the projects. We have a network uh, of enthusiasts and fab labs, uh, so local uh, manufacturing uh, associative base around space projects. And we bring uh, support by material and financial uh, means to projects. Uh, open source is at the heart of the Federation Initiative, first to ensure sustainability. Everything that is produced within the Federation framework, both failures and successes, can be improved by anyone and serve as a basis for the creation of new projects. Uh, it's also a protection. It serves to protect the work of each individual who is who are involved in the projects. Some examples of the projects we are leading. So uh, what you can see here is a, is a electrical uh, rocket stage electrical separation system. So an, an initial prototype flew on a mini rocket in uh, 2019, so that's what you see on the right hand side. Uh, and the second version is being finalized and will be tested in flight in 2021. Another example of projects, a bit more ambitious, uh, you, you may know uh, some bricks of the STEMIS reusable rocket stage demonstrator, which is developed by Ariane Works, are opened within the Federation initiative and under a TEMIS open umbrella project. And so volunteer members are now working alongside Ariane Works employees on concepts for two of these bricks, which could fly to the edge of space in 2022. Uh, still further, uh, we have mass proof. Mass proof is issue for Mars, so producing locally all elements uh, to sustain an autonomous human base on Mars. So the team is working on designing and making demonstrators on Earth with the aim of sending refined version to Mars in the 2030-2040 timeframe. Know about Phoenix. So Phoenix is an open source orbital cloud infrastructure. The objective uh, is to design, build, and put into orbit the first bricks of an orbital cloud. Uh, so what's a cloud? If, uh, if you're not, it's a shared IT infrastructure in orbit, basically. So this cloud uh, it, it provides shared compute and storage capacity accessible from uh, anywhere across the internet. And this cloud will be based on decentralized and a modular architecture. Uh, and the objective is really to make, it, we are not going to put the full constellation uh, overhead. We are going to enable any organization on a global scale to contribute to the deployment by incrementally adding standardized and open source bricks to the infrastructure, with a space or ground segments. Um, so the aim is to provide space-to-space -space and space-to-ground IT container services 
uh, which could be put to multiple uses. Uh, once you provide a, 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 doc, a Docker, you can so, do image computation, trajectory computation, signal processing. The main components, not what is written in the slide, was a, a, a generic slide, but the uh, main component is the IT architecture itself. So each satellite will constitute a node of the infrastructure. So mainly information processing and storage, that's a server, or a communication node, that's a switch. Then we'll have, the, of course, the space platform itself, the communication system, intra-satellite, 30 seconds, okay, intra-satellite communication and communication with the ground, and of course, the ground segment. Uh, our current roadmap, testing the early software layer from an existing orbital platform, ISS or satellite, in 2021, that's next year, launching a 2U proof of concept in 2023, and launching the first nodes of the operation consolidation in 2026. We are currently in the design phase. So the project was launched two months ago, very early. We are using the model-based system engineering methodology and uh, using what you see is uh, open source Capella software. So it allows us to go from the system interaction with customers and ecosystems down to the logical and physical design. Up, second, uh, last, uh, last, uh, right. From the previous slide, last one, last one. <laughs> operational, analysis, uh, operational analysis level, uh, we deep dive into the system architecture at the system analysis level here, and from there we will go down into the logical design within the next few weeks. So you are welcome to contribute in the next steps, join Federation. One twist is that the platform was initially launched in French, uh, but we and up until recently it was only possible to join in French. Uh, we have just recently added support for four additional languages, including English. Be merciful with the work in progress with other languages than French. No worries, uh, no worries. Welcome to contribute to the translation efforts. So we're looking forward to accelerate the pace of innovation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Damien. So, for Damien, please, you know the rule like yesterday. So, give a yes or a yes, a big yes or a small yes. What's your yes now? I want to yes. hear it. Yes. 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 Very good. Okay, next on stage is Baris. So, Baris, I will uh, prepare your presentation. In the meantime, in parallel, I present you. Uh, I am uh, multitasking. This is amazing. So, Baris, you, you see his camera behind him. You have some kind of a fab lab. You know, it's like uh, you, you must be the local fab lab. Uh, who did? No, this is my living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's. I live here. Uh, I don't know, Arthur. Don't, you we have to prepare Sorry, yeah, no worries. And, and let's see in four minutes how how fast we can talk and how much we can tell about the project yeah anyway this looks super interesting a transportable sdr transceiver so uh, baris where are you standing right now i'm in helsinki now but originally i'm from turkey all good then that's the screen is yours you can go Four minutes. Yeah, I will talk about an STR transceiver, which I was dreaming about. Uh, I was there. There are many HF STR transceivers in the market, but no VHF, UHF, or upper frequencies. Uh, I was looking one for working with network scatter, moon bounce, or satellites. Uh, but you, have, there are many strict rules for those. That has to be durable, uh, reliable, etc. So I, I give up with that. Up to uh, when I come searching for for what's in the market as open source, first I figure out that there's P PSDR. I think it's not going on anymore, but it was a very good project. Then I worked with Monka. Monka was the perfect one with the source code. I read all the source code. It's perfect, except the hardware is not as simple as I was looking for. Um, it has very good designs for external mechanical designs. Everybody copied that. It's 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 a very good project, and uh, while, while I checked all the STR implementations, there are very a lot of good uh, UI interfaces that I can use. That's amazing for me to start somewhere. Then I come up with uh, uh, Bar Barbaros WB WB2CBA introduced me the USDX, which is as simple as I, I can find in, in the market. It's only a few hundred lines of Arduino code and a very, very simple hardware you can build, let's say, in 30 or $40. So I decided to use this uh, as the base of my design. And um, then I need a project, not a moon bouncing solution, but a QO100 
uh, satellite communication ground station might be good. Let's make it interesting. I decided to make it portable. So I started writing the requirements first. It will be software defined. It will be portable. It will be cheap. It will be very simple that everyone, everyone can experience. It should be expandable so everyone, everyone can put their ideas on, on it. It should be battery powered because it's portable. It will be stable. And the first rule, it will be open source, collaborative, and nonprofit. So what, what a commercial setup looks like, um, it, some up converters, some down converters, and then SSP radio at the end, which is the most expensive part. So I decided to replace that radio with two uh, USDX receivers. Why two? The, the rest is my prototype. Uh, why two? Because I would like to uh, have a frequency stability. I checked the STR console software, you might know. It's using a very good um, function following the beacons to stabilize the frequency. So I decided to use the same. We're having a second receiver on board. So the frequency stability will not be an issue. This is an overview that you can find in the GitHub page as well. So it, what will it look like? It will look like uh, it will fit a backpack so you can carry it anywhere. It will have at least as less as possible moving parts so you can easily set it up and start working satellite. 10 gigahertz downlink and 2.4 gigahertz uplink with at least 10 watts of power that can work in any mode, including SSP and FD8 kind. So the stage of the project is in the early prototyping phase. I have a bench testing setup. So I have some QSOs with this setup. Um, I roughly have four to five watts output with this setup and it's working great. And I'm, uh, what I'm looking for or what we are looking for, we are looking for contributors uh, because what I believe is the spread of open source is having contribution to your project. So we are looking at developers, PCB designers, makers, mechanical designers, Anyone, anyone is uh, welcome to our project. We have tasks for everybody to collaborate. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. These are the GitHub project pages. Perfect on time, Barris. Awesome. This is amazing. Great project. So uh, I, I wish I had one uh, right now. This is cool. So I think everybody is seeing awesome projects. So please reach out to Barris. Is here. Uh, we'll, you'll be there after, I assume and you'll be there at the launch time. So uh, thank you for giving me the, this opportunity. Thank you. Oh, this is great. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Barry. So for Barry, please uh, give your yes. Great. So next to come up is uh, Jan Peter. Jan Peter, uh, I give you presenter right right now. So Jan Peter is in the Polaris team developing the Polaris project, but is also keen on uh, uh, podcasts. Uh, the irony is that your 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 audio doesn't work very well, and uh, because you you're still waiting for that gift for Christmas, and it's, uh, uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and so he it's has. Welcome everyone to my lightning talk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> very good. So you have uh, four talk. minutes. I see your presentation is three minutes. So that's just perfect. So uh, the screen is yours, and uh, please listen to what uh, Jan Peter has to tell you. Maybe you can do lip sync. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I want to persuade you why it's a good idea to launch a podcast about space-related open source projects and why you too should participate. But just before I start, you may be asking yourself, who is this person and can I trust him with my project? Well, hello, my name is Jan Peter, I'm 28 years old and I study and work at the Technical University of Darmstadt in the field of space systems and machine learning. And can you trust me? Well, they did. Right now, we know that there are existing open source projects, but especially if you're new to the field, finding these projects is not that simple. Or maybe you heard about a project but want to know more about it. Or maybe you want to know about the latest updates. And if you're part of the project, maybe you are missing just that one specialist. And all of these things take time if you want to do them yourself. But luckily, the Internet people have invented one medium that can be applied to almost any situation. I want to launch an audio interview podcast where I talk about space-related open source projects with the actual people involved. 
and to make it easy for everyone to follow the idea of the project and to put it into context, I will do I will create a map of space technology where every project will be located in. The podcast will have two types of episode. An introductive interview where we talk about the topics like the general idea of the project, its history, present and future. And an update episode where every time something major happens, like a bigger software update for example, we meet again to discuss the news, changes and things like this. Each episode will follow a similar agenda, where we start beginner-friendly with a high-level introduction and then dive deeper into the details of the topic. The podcast is first of all targeted for all of us, the OSCW community, but of course everyone is welcome to the party, like general space fans and the actual users of the project. Now, here comes the moment where I need your help. Behind this QR code you will find a survey with seven questions and I would like you that, that, I would, that I would like you to answer. With answers to questions like the preferred duration of the podcast, our beloved topics, you can help me make the best podcast for all of us. You can see the link to the website and the QR code to the survey over here. And for those of you that are interested in the technical details, the tools that we use to produce the show and the timeline I have planned for now, you can have a look at the extra slides on my website. Thank you for your attention and hit me up on these channels to learn more and discuss ideas. Oh, lovely. <laughs> you did amazing. I mean, that was just great. <laughs> Every presentation could go like that. We should make like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the space reindeer. <laughs> uh, all right. Somebody like uh, transmitted your, your link. Uh, so they, they could uh, fill up your survey. Thanks a lot, uh, Jan Peter. Uh, so podcast for open source space. How good is that? Give me your yes or your yes. I want to hear it. This is a big yes, uh, Jan Peter. <laughs> you have to go for. This is good. Thanks a lot. So next in line we have Bantos. Montos has no slides. This is amazing. So let me let me just put a random slide. So Montos is part of the Libre Space Foundation. Is in every project, as I as I recall somehow. There you go. So Mont present it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you want me to make you present it, right? You know how to do things, right? I don't know what's happening with the presentation right now. Make you presenter. You decide. <laughs> That's it. Room one. You you can you can uh, uh, activate like uh, drawing, but it's up to you. You have four minutes, and and uh, this goes from five four. The screen is yours. Oh, you're sharing. Okay. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So All right. it's working. My system is on green mix, but I'll try to make it. So while uh, open source in uh, in software world is uh, well established and actually devour everything else. Uh, and while in electronics uh, is all, also becoming a standard with KiCad nowadays and with uh, some other software, in mechanical is a bit back. And uh, there are some, uh, there were some uh, very like primitive solutions and for 2D design like uh, KiCad that then renamed in Q LibreCAD, no, QCAD LibreCAD and also the thing that the software guys believe about hardware design, which is uh, OpenSCAD. So luckily nowadays uh, we have FreeCAD and FreeCAD uh, nowadays is getting better and better. And after the, the awesome failure of the, <clears throat> uh, how it's called, uh, F360 or something, now it has a lot more people and the community is becoming better and better. This is the design of Cubic in FreeCAD, and this was something that was really, really helpful. And it was uh, this is a fuse be uh, uh, between KiCad and FreeCAD, and you can see how deep the design is. And uh, this design is made by uh, Aegis, actually. And here you can see, like, uh, that this tiny in uh, inductor is. Uh, fits exactly between the connector uh, and this uh, uh, 
like screw. So this is uh, absolutely mandatory in order to, uh, to design something that is so small and everything is super, super tight. So after the design, uh, something that's uh, becoming more and more uh, useful is uh, finite element analysis. And there are a lot of open source tools for uh, for finite element analysis, but they are like just text-based stuff that you need to put some of the nodes and do the calculations. So FreeCAD also now they're becoming uh, uh, more uh, user-friendly in this area. This is the uh, the finite element analysis of the PicoBus deployer, which is a pocket cube deployer, and this is a, a quasi static test, I think. And here you can see how it is uh, uh, performing on, uh, I think, 4G quasi static load. And also, there is Elmer Solver. This is something displayed in Paraview, it's a, problem, uh, a program to display uh, those kind of analysis. Uh, data and this is a, a model of uh, of the sat.coms a project we are developing and this is a thermal simulation with radiation also so those uh, those, those those external panels uh, radiate uh, are radiated by sun and radiate back to the to the board and uh, the last thing is uh, what uh, they said in uh, uh, mechanical design was CAM, is called CAM, and it's uh, computer aided uh, manufacturing. And here you can see a component done by Elias, and this is a component that uh, from PicoBus, and those are the lines from the the, the, uh, the machine can take to carve this out from a single piece of uh, TFE. So I think I'm on time, and I'm waiting for it to begin. Come on. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, <laughs> Mantos, the mechanical guy. So design for space. That's good. So um, thank you, Mantos. Perfect on time. Uh, thanks a lot. You were breaking a little, but we could hear you. Um, and uh, and you have some questions. I think you, you can stop discussion with them. But uh, I want to hear the yes for Mantos about those. I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, big yes, Mantos. <laughs> uh, maybe because you look like Lenny Kravitz. All right. So, <laughs> so Diego, yeah, you're next. Diego, you're next. I will give you presenter rights. So, Diego, uh, I'll make you presenter. You know the rules. You have four minutes and uh, the screen is yours feel free to talk about your picosat approach this yes. is not nice all right sure. upload ah is that right. external video uh no it's next to the camera maybe uh have a look next to the camera share your screen not... sorry yeah okay uh, no problem so pico fluid dynamic actuators in cubesats so that's you uh perfect. right um, uh, all right, Hi. everyone. Uh, my name is Diego Garcia Cacho. I'm presenting on behalf of a fluid access team. They're in the chat here. There are some of them seen in YouTube, but I'm happy to be here to talk to you about PICO fluid dynamic actuators in CubeSats. Let's get into it. So, what are these PFDAs? Normally, of course, uh, or the most well known actuators inside CubeSats that are able to um, provide attitude corrections are. Um, reaction wheels. And basically, these are flywheels that are going to be sped up by electric motors and thus providing this, uh, generating this angular momentum. What PFDA does are imagine these hollow cylinders that are in, uh, inside filled with liquid metal and we have an electromagnetic pump that's going to be turning on and off and providing this uh, fluid with acceleration. And that's going to drive uh, the fluid inside this channel to generate angular momentum. So what's the kind of like, uh, these are the two basic operating principles. We don't have uh, many moving parts inside PFDAs. So this allows us to uh, not worry about uh, ball bearings or wear on the, on the channel. Um, we don't need any uh, lubrication or um, these are some of the things that commonly plague um, different uh, reaction wheels. What is also really nice about PFDAs are they, they um, they are very low friction. So 
um, we can provide constant uh, torque at really small angular rates. And if you ever had pointing issues where you've seen a little bit of jitter due to the unbalanced nature of um, reaction rules, this is something that the PFDAs uh, are very good to handle. So this is what makes them really uh, an interesting choice of actuator. So let's uh, talk to, to a little bit about them in, the, in, in another sense, like in a whole integral sense. Um, imagine that PFDAs are actually really agile uh, actuators. So they allow uh, to be sped up really quickly and decelerate really quickly. So we can add to the list of um, capabilities that our small set um, will be able to use. And we'll talk about it a little bit in the next slide. But I also want to uh, let you know that, for example, uh, these reaction wheels usually are very bulky and uh, take up a lot of prime real estate inside our very small uh, compact CubeSat platforms. And what with PFDAs, what we can do is we can actually um, optimize for volume and we can allow a lot more of, uh, of that uh, volume to go into payload. We can have uh, multiple cameras. We can have bigger lenses. If, if you take kind of like um, this uh, picture of what the three axis uh, configuration of, of what PFDAs uh, look like inside the um, one U CubeSat. Um, right. So what can what what's really nice about uh, PFDAs in terms of what they can enable our CubeSat platforms is that uh, with their agility and with their ability to be able to be sped up quickly, we can do uh, artificial swath increase and single space stereo imaging, which are really interesting. Uh, pointing maneuvers uh, that we talk even about in, in the reference. And we'll be here also in the chat. So um, if, you, if you want to learn a little bit more about those, I will happy, we're happy to, um, to um, let you a little bit in on that. So this is our first kind of like, um, as a group, our first um, uh, dip into the open space community. We've been very uh, uh, help, helped by different uh, open um, source platforms. So we want to like bridge these these um, these fields, these, uh, these gaps, and we want to um, kind of find ways of collaborating with uh, different people uh, in this open source community. So um, I'll end it right there, and I'll be in the chat. And thank you for your very lightning attention. Thank you. Oh, very nice, Diego. Very cool. So uh, you do you plan to open source the, the hardware? Uh, let me go over here. Okay, so of course it's not just me in this uh, initiative, but we're all, all the people that's contributing to this project that are part of Fluid Access are definitely very uh, willing to start opening up um, all right. All right. what our um, what we think wow. are, are gaps in the ADCS um, subsystem that uh, is a real step up for CubeSat builders. Very cool. We'll be looking for you then. This is nice. You have like interesting questions in the chat. Uh, you know, does it make bubbles and everything? But for now, I just want to hear a yes for your project. This sounds so cool. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So uh, please, uh, please stand by, stay at the launch time, and uh, have those discussions with everyone. That's that's the goal, really. So we, we also kind of can make some break breakout rooms for that. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Diego. So now we're going to start the tutorial uh, phases. Thanks for this. Um, all right. So we have two rooms. So first room uh, will be, uh, yeah, oh, I'm here, uh, will be managed by me and room two by LF and Elefterios. So uh, the, the first one is on demo on writing, loading, installing, and executing your code on OPSAT. So we have uh, people from uh, ESOC uh, around for, for doing that. And we have on room two, we have restful data storage and visualization. So this would start in five minutes. You, you can take the time for a bio break or to, to get to know each other right now. I will actually, we, since we have five minutes, I will uh, do a breakout uh, room. And this means that you will be split in different groups. I make ten of them, so <laughs> this would be like this would be like four people per room. So please say hi, get to know each other. All right, number of rooms. Oh, eight max. All right, duration two minutes. You have two minutes to say hi. Randomly assign. Let's go.